Today we're on site at a film studio. Bazinga. When it's nighttime, the zombies act pretty normal around here. But during the day, you do not go outside. This is the studio challenge. Let's try and beat it. Now, I went into this challenge completely blind. The description just says where all the best movies are filmed. I naively thought this was just going to be a fun little challenge that I could take on that wouldn't take me very long. Uh, get this thing off me! Starting this challenge off, you spawn in a small building, inside of a small map. But don't worry, as soon as you get outside, you'll find out exactly why this is a challenge. So, we got to looting the kitchen for food, and there is an abundance in all these buildings, don't worry about that. Check the bathroom for healing supplies, and use the sink to drink some water. It's good for you. Head to the bedroom, pick up some supplies, and then we were off. After heading outside, I really wasn't sure what to expect, but Zero Zombies was very concerning. Hey, guess what gives me nightmares? <laughs> Love it. Now, I hadn't done any prior research on this challenge. So in order to figure out where anything decent was, I was going to have to fight off hundreds of zombies and explore the map at the same time. Now to say I was struggling with this challenge at night would be an understatement. The majority of my playtime so far has been throughout the day, and I usually try and sleep throughout the nights. So completely flipping the way I play was an absolutely huge change, and I was struggling. I've also developed a deep felt hatred for crawling zombies during this challenge. <laughs> As time went on, I became more accustomed to how the game mode was set up. Having no multi-hit was a slight change, but it wasn't too crazy. It doesn't make a huge difference to me, it just makes the game take longer, but it's not a massive difference. At this point, I still had no idea what awaited me in the daytime. I was just running around trying to get as much as I could done as quickly as possible. Now, I was actually streaming this live on Twitch, link in the description. And if you notice on the top right hand corner, it's almost 9am. Guess what happens at 9am? Holy shit. Oh my god. This is oh, oh. Yeah, uh just a moment, just in a bit of a situation. My Ah, oh, zombies are running. What's up? What is? Zombies are running. <laughs> no, not like this. No, not like this. No, get it up. So, next plan. Well, naturally, I was absolutely terrified at this point, so I picked myself up a few hardware items, did a little exploring, and then, because I noticed that all the starter houses had all their curtains intact, I decided to set up and try and hide out inside of one of them during the day. Safe at last. Finally, I could take a little break and try and gather myself and figure out what my next plan of attack was. I then decided it was time to explore the rest of the map and what it had to offer. I spent much of my time during the night exploring different buildings and sussing out what was in each building and what they had to offer. While doing this, I got eaten by the undead many, many times. Here are the traits I ended up choosing in the end. Slow healer because I didn't want to get hit at all. Sleepy head so I could sleep throughout the day. Cat size so I could see at night. Fast learner because I needed to get my aiming up as high as possible as quickly as possible. Strong because melee is awesome. Did I also mention we were playing as Kev? Big Kev? Now you know Kev loves a bit of pop. Nothing gets him going like a bit of pop, let me tell you. So we grabbed all the fresh food we could, plenty of canned goods, and we got on with our day. Do you know that soap helps you clean better? Look, if I do this, I can't, I can't wash. Now I've decided to do the absolute opposite to what I did earlier. And instead of putting up curtains, I decided to take all the curtains I could grab because I had a bit of a trick up my sleeve. I close on out the back, I go around around the front. And an old rocking chair. Now, in order to do the strategy I was going for, the only thing we really required was food. And because all the houses around where we spawn have quite an abundance of food, our next step was to head over to a little building I like to call the gun shop. Now we got a little bit lucky here because there wasn't too many zombies spawning just out the front of it. On top of that, we also got lucky with one of the doors being unlocked. If they weren't unlocked, we were going to have to either find a key or get the zombies to try and smash it down for us. Now you can probably already tell why I chose this building. For some reason, the tracking on the zombies is terrible when it comes to these types of buildings and windows. You'd occasionally get one or two coming through the middle doors because they couldn't fit on the left or right. But for the most part, this was going to be the place I'd be holding up for my journey. 
If you're wondering why I'm putting these sheets on the outside of these windows and not on the inside, I find that they did better job at detracting the zombies than putting them on the inside facing outwards. I, I don't know. I don't know how it works. I'm just doing it because it works. Just like that, we've completed our own little area that is completely safe. No zombies are going to come wandering over here. And we've got plenty of room, lots of storage areas. This is perfect. Now, the first order of business was to clear out the front of the store. I couldn't have dozens of zombies smashing on the window all night, just driving me completely insane. The JS2000 shotgun is your friend, and I guarantee you it will do its work during this challenge. After letting off a few shots down the road, it was time to run a huge loop around and back to the gun store, hopefully leading away all the zombies that were out the front. The few that still remained out the front of the shop can be taken by hand. I picked up a meat cleaver earlier, so if you walk out the front door, they actually end up coming inside the building when they see you. So I just quickly used this method to finish off the few that were standing at the front. There were a few different reasons I picked the gun store as a place to live, but one of the bigger ones was because the place had a sink with unlimited water. This meant that all I had to do was find food, and I was pretty set for the rest of the game. Now, another reason I picked the gun store as a place to live was because they had these pop-up beds which spawn in the corner. Now, you don't need any skills or any special ability to pick these up you don't need any tools anyone can pick these up and move them around so the easiest thing to do was just to pick them up and move them back into the shooting range which is where i was setting up to live this meant that i could sleep anytime at the back of the store and i wouldn't have to wake up to a zombie nibbling on my nuts so once that was done i went around to the rest of the store got all the ammunition i required and sorted it all together and while I was doing this, I realized that I probably had enough ammunition to take care of the rest of the zombies on the map. At least, that's what I thought. But in the meantime, it's time to take care of all the zombies at the front of the store again. Now there is a jeweler actually just down the street, I think it's actually one store over, and I think a lot of people might ask me why I didn't set up there, and it was purely because I just didn't like the way it was laid out. It had a total recipe to be bottlenecked at the very front and allow you not to escape easily, whereas the gun store had a more open floor plan. This meant that at least if a lot of zombies came and started breaking in, I could lead them into where the gun range was and try and evade them, whereas in the jeweler, that was not possible. I found a stack of cardboard boxes which were in one of the bathrooms. I decided to set these up down the shooting range just as an extra spot for storage. Now I know I had a whole bunch of storage at the entry of the shooting range but this was for more stuff that was required that was closer to my bed just if needed. That evening there was a large storm passing over. I gathered my weapon, my ammo, had some food and water and psyched myself up. It was time to take on our first large horde. I feel like the Project Zomboid audio for especially the weather is just like incredibly well done. Like I could just sit in a building while it was storming and it would be just so relaxing. No, I'm serious. Just, just listen to how good this sounds. Oh my god, it's so good. But then anyways, I started shooting zombies. Hey, are you still with us? Good. After that massacre was over, I had to go back to the gun store and get more ammunition. This challenge is actually insanely exhausting. I thought it wouldn't be too bad using weapons, but you're sitting there constantly trying to watch your back with so many zombies coming towards you. You need to constantly be focusing and paying attention because one wrong move and you are restarting and it is painful. Trust me, I had to do it. After the massacre with the time I had left, I decided to do some more exploring around the town Discovered that there was actually a police station not too far from where I was, assuming it had a vault where there was a whole bunch of weapons and ammo. Now, it probably wasn't going to be required, but just in case, I was going to go there at some point and try and loot the whole place just to get as much ammunition as I possibly could because there was a ridiculous amount of zombies outside. And I wasn't the biggest expert in the weaponry scene. Come on, everybody. Stretch those hamstrings. After sleeping for that evening, I woke up and had a total lapse of concentration. 
Okay, maybe not a total lapse because I reacted to that incredibly quickly, but I didn't realize that it was still time where the sprinters were out, so I had to be a bit more careful. Putting up a restricted area sign means zombies won't come into your base, I think. A few streets over from the gun store, there was a medical center with not too many infected inside. Now, if you're wondering why I'm exhausted, well, I was doing a lot of Pilates that morning. But with the extra time I had left, I decided to try and get into the storage rooms inside the medical center. Now, these medical beds are actually some of the best beds you can get in the game. And you can also just dismantle them the exact same way we did to the little bed inside the gun shop. So, if you have the time and patience, I recommend getting these to wherever you're set up, because you'll get a much nicer night's sleep. And after a few little tussles with some of the undead, I finally reached the medical rooms I was after. There is a lot of different medical supplies here, so take what you please. Now this isn't absolutely necessary because the map is actually so small. If you do get attacked and scratched, you can actually just run here without too many issues. But I'm not a fan of leaving things up to chance, so I like to transport these items to my base where I at least know it's definitely going to be safe. At least safer than here. The only other thing I was missing was some vitamins, but I found these in the shop front that's on the other side of the medical center. There were so many dead bodies outside that I was starting to feel sick when I'd go into certain areas, so I just made sure that I had pretty much one of every medical item just in case I needed it. After we were finished with the medical center, it was approaching 6am. We still had a few hours before the sprinters came out, but I figured we'd get a kickstart on our sleep, sleep through the day, and wait for night to come. That evening, we woke up, and I decided to take care of the other hordes around the map. Now, we took care of the hordes that were in the western car park. So tonight, I decided we would head east, down towards the sort of plaza with all the fountains and whatnot near the jewelry store, and we'd take care of all the zombies on that side of things, just to help us clear out most of the area we were near and create a safe sort of area. Well, it took a fair bit of time, but I finally dispatched that second horde. It took a lot of ammunition. So much, in fact, that I had to go and get more shotgun shells. I had none in my base, so the next plan was to run to the police station, hoping that most of the zombies had been drawn away and break into the armory there. That way I could restock up on ammunition and continue the onslaught. Because after spending two full nights absolutely decimating two big hordes, I was running a fairly low on shotgun ammo, so I needed some more. I really did think that most of the undead were going to be heading towards the corner of the map, but there were still so many hanging around the police station. I really thought all that noise I made would have distracted all of the ones around here. But now that it hasn't, I need to take on the few that are here, and I'm going to have to get them to walk elsewhere. That's the only thing I can do. I can't take on a horde inside the police station. It will not work. On my looping run, I realized that I didn't even have a backpack, and I was struggling to carry just the most generic items around. So I decided to head back to the first horde that I destroyed, loot all the bodies, and take myself something I could use for storage. I definitely think the worst thing about this challenge is if you get bitten, you immediately die, and stuff like this makes the challenge so much more stressful, because if you miss one shot or make one mistake, it can easily be the end of your playthrough and after playing for hours at a time it is the last thing you want to happen it was on my way back when i realized that i just didn't have enough shotgun slugs to take on any more groups of zombies so going to the police station was going to be way too risky i decided to switch it up and get out the m14 not as good for clearing big hordes that are all together but definitely perfect for what i needed it for and it, uh, it does help if you put your mag in the gun before starting to take on hordes of zombies. Now I still hadn't made it back to the police station, but I took down a fair few zombies that wandered their way over to my gun shop. So I had the thought that I probably should fortify my little area inside the shooting range just to be on the safe side. There's a whole bunch of hay bales right at the end of the shooting range, so I decided to pick them up, move them around and create a makeshift wall. I'm pretty sure zombies can't jump over these, so it was perfect for what I needed it for. 
Now I gotta say, the shotgun is excellent versing large group together hordes. It really does actually help boost up your aiming level really quick. But for groups of zombies who are sort of not so bunched together, the M14 is actually scariously addictive to use. And because I had used my shotgun so early on and I had the XP boost trait, my aiming was already like level 4 or 5, so the M14 was just putting in work like easily. After killing hundreds and hundreds more zombies, I finally got the opportunity to head back to the police station. I think the M14 might be louder than the shotgun, so it felt like a lot more zombies were heading in my direction. So when I finally had cleared them all out, I made my way to the police station and took a look inside. Here I was able to restock up on a lot of shotgun ammo. Shotgun ammo is probably most important because there was going to be still a few more hordes lurking around the map that I needed to take care of and the M14 wouldn't have been able to take them on as easily. So much killing. So many zombies. So much ammunition used. So deaf. Remember when I said I found this challenge exhausting earlier and you need to be patient? And it's not because of the overwhelming numbers of zombies coming at you, it's because they don't stop coming, and there is so many of them. It's really hard to give you guys a good idea of the scale, but there is well over a thousand on this small map. I've sped up a little bit of footage because I don't want to show just zombie killing non-stop because it is just repetitive as, but it'll give you an idea of just how many zombies there are. Mind you, I've been shooting in this area for a few days now, and they will still come around and find new ways of getting to me. Now, a lot of you put a lot of great recommendations in my previous video's comments, and I have been looking at each of them, and it is very hard for me to make videos on these sorts of things, working a full-time job and having a life, but uh, hey, if you have cool challenges, drop them in the comments below. I like seeing and learning about the new ones that I haven't seen before. I am fairly new to Project Zomboid. I think I've got maybe 70 hours, all of it basically because of YouTube now. But yeah, if you have some really cool recommendations for challenges or whatever, chuck them in the comments below and I'll take a look. If I think it's gonna be a good video, I'll chuck it in and uh, yeah, thank you very much. I had taken out so many zombies, hundreds and hundreds in just a couple days. Now it was time to go through the different individual buildings and clear them out as best as I could. I didn't want any of them hiding, waiting for an opportunity to kill me later. So while I was at it, I went through every building I could and took care of the rest of the stragglers that were inside the buildings. Another day, another massive group of enemies destroyed. But it was at this point that I started looking for a vehicle. I was interested in doing a sort of circle around the map or just checking out the roads, drawing out the rest of the stragglers that were coming out and finishing off the rest. I did get to check out a fair few movie sets, but to be honest, they were a little underwhelming. You know what, these, these didn't seem like big budget productions, just, that's just my two cents of course. Class, instead of going to the box factory today, we'll be going to the box factory. Finally I had reached the perimeter. It was actually a giant wall surrounding this entire place, which cuts it off from the rest of the world. Except for these boom gates, of course. Now, there wasn't anything outside, there's just a road which loops all the way around. But it was interesting to check out, the setup and everything. It was, um, it was very bizarre, but you know what? I'm here for it. It was actually getting frustrating, honestly. Like, you're just trying to finish off the thing, you're trying to finish off the challenge, and then all of a sudden, like, 200 dozen zombies come out of a doorway, and you're stuck there for the next half an hour, just non-stop reloading and shooting. I'm starting to lose my mind, honestly. How good is this shot, right? So you've got two layers of glass, computers in the way, undead also in the way, and there's a little head-high door with a window, and I hit the zombie, smack bang. How good is that? Finally managed to come across a vehicle with no fuel. Luckily, I had a bottle of water which I could empty and fill up with a bit of petrol and get the car going. This is basically my end game goal here. As long as I can get this thing running and I can drive around the map and check things out, I'm pretty happy. The whole area was empty now. All you could hear was the wind in the trees and the subtle sounds of nature. 
Undead had been conquered. There may have been a few in the surrounding bushland, but I wasn't about to go and clear all that out. But the town was quiet for the first time in a very long time. After fueling up, it was still pretty early in the morning, but I thought I'd do a quick little drive around and check out some of the roads and then head back for a rest before finishing our journey. But first I had to go to the gas station. I wanted to fill up the car completely full so I didn't have to do a lot of these short trips with a bottle of petrol. There was a small horde that did eventually arrive but I took care of them because I had plenty of ammo so it wasn't too much of an issue. I ended up switching through to pistols because I did run low on ammunition on my main weapons but we were able to successfully get some fuel in the car and get away with our life. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's about it. I'm going to call it there and say that was a success. We killed almost all of the main groups of zombies. There were one or two stragglers hanging around in some of the, uh, the bushy areas. But I think overall, that's a pretty successful completion. Obviously, uh, you know, now all we would do is survive the elements. But I don't think any other zombies were entering the map. So that's a win for me. And this is actually probably one of my first successful challenges. So I was really excited about that. Uh, thank you very much for watching if you made it this far. If you wouldn't mind liking the video, that would be awesome. Um, and if you want to see more, hit subscribe, comment below about, you know, your favorite Project Zomboid something or other. Alright, see you later.